Ooh. Welcome to the Weasley update. I am Aiden Weas. I am, uh, I'm pretty fucking sauced. And I'm ready to ramble. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie. My, uh, alk tolerance is pretty low. And I took a couple larger pulls of, uh, some Bacardi Black tonight to get this started a little bit. Just sort of felt in the spirit. I haven't had any fucking school this week. I'm back up in, uh, in the old ham. Good old Bellingham. And holy shit, dude, the snow has been fucking everything up. Actually, one day, I walked my ass to campus and then, uh, got there, like, five minutes early and none of the lights were on in the classroom and I was like, you're fucking kidding me. Looked at my email and there was just, like, a progression of emails from my teacher that was like, hey, class might be canceled. Hey, we're gonna push it off till 1030. Hey, it's canceled. And I was just like, God... That is what I get for not checking my email in the morning. I was rushing that day, too. So even if I could have, like, just left later and still gone through the misery of walking my ass out there, even that would have been better. Uh, but I give, I give myself a lot of shit to do in the morning. And I think it's really important to have those easy wins, you know, that you can just knock out in the morning. morning. Um, not to say that you should overdo it, but, you know... Like, every morning I make sure to get up, uh, work out, shower, have a good breakfast, and make my bed. At least. Those are the four things. And usually, especially if I'm fucking doing one of these because I get so stoned and slash or sauced, um, I will have to clean up after myself from the night before. I'll just wake up and there's just fucking cheese it's everywhere shit like my pjs that i just threw off in my sleep not lately though because it has been cold as fuck actually i wanted to have my heater on while i could do this but it's too fucking loud when i tried to do it it sounded like i was speaking into a fan you did that shit when you were a kid oh my god it makes me so fucking mad but you know i'm cozied up in a wee city it's all good they're pretty cozy. The champion ones are real fucking cozy. I like those a lot. I was really surprised when Printful added those champion gear, dude. Uh, I like the dad hats, too, but I'm not gonna lie. I think I'm more of a trucker hat guy. I know how fucking weird that sounds when you say it. But, like, a mesh back, like, snapback trucker hat. Oh, that's perfect for my gorilla-shaped head. I seriously have a fucking ape-shaped head. Like my, uh, I've got really thick hair, sort, sort, sort of hidden under there. But if you just run your hand over the top of my head, it's like two little hills. Just whoop, whoop. And the, if you start from the back of my head, the second crest at the front is not as high as the back one. So it's like all on a little slight decline. It's weird as shit, dude. You know, fucking, some kids had, uh, helmets. Yeah, had to wear fucking helmets as a kid. Not shaming anyone who did, but they are a fucking nerd, if that's the case. And you know who I'm talking about, if you're fucking listening. <laughs> that was a little bit mean. I honestly sort of feel a little inspired to take another pull of this Bacardi right now. I've had it in the freezer for so long, so it just goes down so smooth. Bacardi is totally my drink, but this, this fucking, this Bacardi Black is rough, bro. It has been in my freezer forever. I, I really wanted to try everything. Because, uh, actually Bacardi is sort of what reinvigorated me, um, in like the drinking game. Not that I like go super hard or anything but i remember there was just like a span of time where i was like oh my god fuck drinking and then i had one really good night with bacardi and i was like that's that's my fucking drink and the following day i was drunk for like 18 consecutive hours it was pretty fucked up for my body but a really entertaining couple of days it was a nice summer day we're hanging out at my buddy's house the night before got super shit-faced Woke up, started taking some pulls. Because they had, amongst other things, two half gals of regular Bacardi. So we were just going fucking hard that night. Next day, we all started taking pulls. And then we just went to a... 
excuse me. Just went to a local beach. Oh, God. Classic summer day, right? When you're fucking 18, 19 years old. But, um, yeah, then I tried the lemon, and I... That's... I mean, don't get me wrong. I know that's a fruity-ass fucking drink, but, oh, my God, that shit goes down smooth. I'm a hoe-ass, so I chase my hard liquor anyways. Um, so if you do that shit with Sprite, it goes down so fucking easy. But I found that one place, couldn't find it anywhere up in Bellingham. Could only find a lime, which is worse than fucking regular Bacardi. So when I got up here at one point, I was looking at all like the, the sort of classic options, and they had black and gold were like basically the two alternatives at my local Fred Meyer. And, uh, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to try all these at some point. So I tried the gold. I was pretty into it. I've actually got the empty bottle, like, sort of displayed on my fucking kitchen counter. Not bad. Still preferred regular Bacardi. Uh, this black shit has just been such a fucking bitch to get through. It is a pain in the ass, but... I know it's going down pretty smooth. Like I said, I'm a hoe, so I chased my fucking drinks, and I just tried some uh, some wild cherry Pepsi with it, and that is the shit. Let me tell you, I tried Coke with this before, and I tried Dr Pepper, and it was still just fucking awful. And it's been frozen all the time, so it's not like there's that difference. Oh man, man, some shit has sort of happened. I, uh, we're back onto the bi-weekly schedule. Not back onto, like it ever started, I guess. But this is going to be a bi-weekly thing. I just released those first three episodes. Um, so I wouldn't be, like, super behind. Um, yeah, so the last one I did was on Christmas Eve. Man, I had an awesome Christmas. I, uh, how the fuck was everyone else's Christmas? Or whatever fucking holidays celebrate, sue me. There's so many I can't fucking count. Man, it's a new year, too. It is a new year since I fucking recorded this. I set some goals. I was inspired by one of my buddies. Um, he just set, like, 15 pretty achievable but also ambitious goals. And I was like, you know, I'm going to do that same thing. Um, I, was, I still need to do this. I'm going to put it in a Word document and just put little ways that, like, you know, like... Put a little arrow underneath with the question, how are you going to work towards it? Because it's so easy to, just at the beginning of the year, set goals for yourself and be like, yeah, I'm going to do this this year, and then not follow through. So, I definitely don't want that to be the case. Man, you know, each new year comes new movies and shit, dude. They fucking released a trailer for Morbius. Morbius? With Jared Leto? Yeah, I like Jared Leto. It's, um... It's a part of the Sony Marvel movies. Like, they're taking more Spider-Man bad guys and just fucking making them heroes, I guess. But Morbius is about a dude who has some blood, some rare fucking blood disease or some shit like that. And uh, he becomes a vampire trying to cure himself, basically. But it was weird because in one clip, there was the Sam Raimi, Tobey Maguire spray-painted on a wall behind him. Spoilers for Spider-Man uh, Far From Home, if you haven't seen that yet. Um, with Then there was the word murderer written over it. Like, it was uh, them sort of like attempting to bridge the gap between what happened at the end of the last Spider-Man and this Morbius movie. But they were so fucking lazy or... I, I mean, I, I don't know what it was. Maybe it was them trying to be cute with an easter egg but they slapped the toby Maguire spider-man underneath um but then what sort of confirmed it because people were like oh my god is this set in the raimi verse it's like shut the fuck up no it they're not gonna, they're not gonna fucking do that shit um yeah what really tied it up at the end was michael keaton's vulture from uh spider-man homecoming showed up at the end that's very interesting looks like they're setting up the sinister six dude sony has been trying to do that for so fucking long i feel like that's totally what they were getting at with the original spider-man 3 and that was totally where they were going like publicly where they were going with the amazing spider-man franchise and that's where they went with the game which no hate i mean anyone who knows me knows i fucking love that game 
Oh my god, I love that game. I had so much fun playing it. You know what games I played the most? Is, no, not maybe the most, but remember playing the most as a kid. For my birthday one year, I got this uh, this disc for my GameCube, the best console of all time. And it was, like, so many Sonic games. I can't remember how many it was. It was probably, like, eight or something. But it was um, just different generations of Sonic. And I played the old school Sonic so fuck. I mean, I played them all hard. But I played it so hard. There was actually one mode that was weird. It was basically Tetris, but it was themed after the bad guy. It was called, like, Mr. Robotnik's something or other. And my sister fucking kicked ass at that, I remember. <coughs> Man, I sort of said I was going to take a poll, and I didn't. I don't know how I feel about doing that shit on here, though. It's not like you can see me. You just fucking hear me go silent for a while. <laughs> like, make some fucking awful noise because I'm a bitch. You know what? I'm doing it. The problem is, I have a rule about not keeping any drinks on or food on the same like surface as my open laptop. <coughs> or just whole laptop for that matter. And uh, so it's on the counter. I'm sort of going to have to wheel my ass over here. Oh, God. That's not good. Okay. Man, uh, Colin Farrell is officially going to be the Penguin. That is a really fucking interesting choice, I think. Oh, I'm trying to open this with one hand and hold the mic. This is so hard. Okay. Oh, fuck me. I need to get my fucking chaser ready. Why am I trying to do this? You know it's humanly impossible to multitask? Your brain just rapidly goes back and forth between shit. <sighs> Alright, here we go. Yep. Excuse me. Holy shit. And got some on my Wii, so he's fucking nice. Should have known some fucking dumb shit like that was gonna happen. Hold on. Oh. Uh. Ah, okay. Yeah, that one was bad. That didn't feel good. I actually don't know why I'm drinking on this one because my stomach feels like shit. I made myself some mac and cheese earlier and just went so hard. And I accompanied it with a corn dog. So, a lot of food and um, it was not good for me. It was really not good for me. But it tasted delicious. And I, my stomach just hurt, but I was convincing myself it was because I poisoned myself with some fucking... Some Keurig pods that, like, wash your fucking thing. I was so scared about doing that. So I was just laying in bed. I was like, I'll nap it off. And I woke up and it's, my stomach still hurt. And I was like, oh my god, I'm, I, I need to call the emergency room. It's because I have some of my mom in me. Oh, man, so you know what else happened? Mac Miller released a new album. Maybe I should have looked up how to pronounce the term you call an album after someone dies before I did this, so I didn't sound like any more of a jackass, I suppose. It's like a post to... I'd have to see it. I'm not even familiar with, with the word. Like, posthumous or something. Anyways, they did it really well. I think, um, usually, I, uh, I'm not an advocate for that sort of shit. Like with... XXX Tentacion, as soon as he died, it was just like a money grab. They were throwing every fucking unused verse he ever had. So I, I wasn't with that at all. And then there was like an XXX museum. That was so fucking weird, dude. I thought that was so weird. But with uh, with Circles, which is the name of the album, it's, uh, it's different. His last album of Swimming, he died pretty soon after releasing it. Basically, his his uh, family like put out one sort of small letter that basically said um, that swimming and circles were supposed to be accompanying albums meant to like mirror each other. I, I don't I don't want to like you you should really read it because I think it's pretty 
pretty powerful, but um, essentially they said that he was really far into recording it, that the dude who produced, who helped him produce both albums sort of cleared his schedule to, uh, to finish this one, and it was so fucking good. And when they did that, they also dropped a single called Good News, and I just can't stop listening to it. And I can't stop watching the music video. The music video is basically a, uh, it's basically just a tribute to Mac Miller. And it is really well done. It's sort of trippy and psychedelic, and you know, like every every time I watch it, I find something new. But I, I think it's really really well done. And I mean, like I would just sort of wake up at four in the morning, just get on my Roku TV and play that. Just yeah. I don't know. Good News was like the first song that really touched me in a while. But Circles officially dropped um, today, I guess, but for me at 9 o'clock last night. So I was getting ready, dude. Like it, it played out almost exactly as I wanted it to. I wanted to have a, all my shit done for the day so I could just sit down, listen to it all the way through once um, chronologically then shuffle through and digest it some more and i knew i wasn't gonna have school the next day and so i knew that i would just lay in bed and listen to it as i slept and all that shit uh i'm not gonna lie sort of forgot where i was going with this that last poll sort of did me in i almost feel like i should throw crackers in my fucking face to sort of no that's not the point of this podcast um but it, it was a really awesome album it was a really awesome album. Oh, yeah. No, I, I wanted to have a bowl in me before the album came out. Just, like, you know, snap a bowl through the old Chongsky. And then, um, right as soon as, like, the album dropped at 9 o'clock, I wanted to listen to the first song, also called Circles, and smoke another bowl. And that uh, that is almost exactly how it played out. Except it was weird because when I downloaded good news on apple music it sort of had this comment in the album description that was like download the whole album now and it'll just automatically download to your phone and, uh, when the album comes out but it wasn't doing it so i was like what the fuck and i just looked it up on apple music and i could listen to it but like the it was almost like there were two different versions and the one that i downloaded the only song i could listen to was uh good news so i had to fucking delete the whole album and then redownload it first world problems you know but uh, i'm not going to get into it too much but the highlights for me i think were woods once a day for sure once a day is so so awesome that's one of my favorite max songs ever i know it's only been a day but jesus christ songwriting on that every day is also super awesome i really like that's on me and again good news and god damn it that good news music video was so good you know, I also started watching The Irishman. I know I'm late as fuck on this, and I still haven't even finished it, but I, uh, I'm i about an hour and 20 minutes in because I found this thing on Instagram. I'm sure everybody fucking saw it. It was like how to break it up, like a mini series, and I think it's four parts. And I stopped 20 minutes early from where the second part should end because I could feel myself dozing off. And I was like, I just need to pay attention. And more than anything, I was just mad at myself for starting it when I was, uh, when I was pretty tired. But I had, you know, started it with my buddy earlier that day, and the way that that part one leaves off, you're just like, fuck, I don't want to stop. That was an awesome day. Again, no school, because of the fucking snow, so we just fucking bundled up, ate a ton of food, and watched some of the Irishmen. And also the Aaron Hernandez Netflix documentary. Holy fuck, dude. That shit is really interesting. It's a limited thing, I guess. I think that's weird. You know what? This was sort of crazy. I know uh, no one else cares except me, but they crossed over the... Fl- uh, excuse me. Holy fuck. They crossed over the, um, the TV flash with... Uh, the Justice League Flash, Ezra Miller and Grant Custon, never thought that would be done. It's blowing up the nerd community. Um, and I think that also means big things for what the movie's going to be. Just sort of 
reading between the lines here, but Andy Muschietti, I believe is how you pronounce his name, he directed both It movies and is directing the new Flash movie. He said it's going to be a different version of Flashpoint, which is a Flash storyline in which the Flash goes back in time and stops his mom from being killed and consequently sends a ripple through time that changes everything. Like, instead of Bruce Wayne's parents being murdered in Crime Alley, uh, he gets murdered, his dad becomes a crazy gun-wielding Batman, and his mom turns into the Joker. Um, which is what I really wanted to see with fucking Jeffrey Dean Morgan. When I was watching Batman v Superman, and they opened it with Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and I can't ever remember her name, and I'm so sorry, I, I love her so much. She played Maggie on The Walking Dead. She was also on Supernatural. Whoever played Martha Wayne, when I was watching that movie at the very beginning, I was like, there is no way they hired these t two actors to just, like, these are really good sought-after actors. Like, there's no way they just hired them to be in this for fucking ten seconds and have no lines. Literally no lines for the woman who plays Maggie. Um... And I think that's definitely where they were going to take that, especially with the, the sort of weird Flash traveling back in time later in the movie thing. Oh, God, that fucking movie. I don't even want to get into it. But, yeah, no, it sort of... I don't want There's really not much to digest. It's just a stupid little cameo, pretty much. But, like, they just talk and... Fucking Ezra Miller references Cyborg at one point and he says something about oh is this cosplay and then um, Grant Gustin is like no I'm the Flash and then Ezra Miller is like you're the what like oh sort of like what I predict is that that's going to be a scene in the Flash movie and uh, that's how he's going to get his name I think that's sort of how that unfolded because also what I read was that that whole episode had been filmed and locked and whoever at Warner Brothers asked whoever at the CW if they could put that cameo in. So I think they were trying to set up something for the movie. Who fucking knows, though? I did watch that Flash show back in the day, but it just got too fucking stupid for me. Oh, my God. And it was because I watched Arrow, which was really cool. The first season, he was just fucking killing dudes left and right and then the second season he was a big old bitch and then it got weird and there was magic and shit um then they were just trying too hard to make a batman but i was so into it that at emerald city comic-con i actually paid to get my picture taken with steven amell that was really cool another year at comic-con i got my picture taken with uh, jason momoa of game of thrones he's aquaman now too so that's cool but you know, he wasn't Aquaman at the time, obviously. <coughs> Excuse me. I was probably 12. And I wasn't allowed to watch Game of Thrones. However old I was, I was not allowed to watch Game of Thrones. And so my parents were just like, yeah, you're going to want this picture later. And I did, after I watched Game of Thrones. <coughs> God damn it. Excuse me. And uh, I especially did after I watched Aquaman. Just because I was like, oh, more people will know who this guy is. Not because Aquaman was a good movie. I also one year got my picture taken with John Bernthal, who played Shane on The Walking Dead, and Lori Holdren, who played um, Audrey or something. I'm not even sure that's her actual name, to be honest. But John Bernthal also played The Punisher, which was awesome because I fucking loved that show. And if rumors are true, then Marvel is bringing him and Daredevil back into the fold. Oh my god, I loved that show. And Daredevil. Daredevil was so, so fucking good. I really thought the Moon Knight show would be good for Netflix, but obviously Disney's got their own streaming service now. It's just sort of concerning because they said they were going to keep, you know, bloodier stuff on other platforms that they own, like Hulu. But they're putting Moon Knight on Disney+. Plus. And I feel like Moon Knight is a uh, pretty fucked up character, bro. But it sounds like they're trying to get Daniel Radcliffe to do it. Very, very interesting. We will see. We will fucking see. I just wish someone would give me 
the rights to make a Batman movie. And I, I think Pattinson will be good and whatever, but I, I really think Batman needs to be made to a rated R horror sire horror style film and I would do a lot of it from the perspective of the criminal because what we've seen and this is dope don't get me wrong but pretty much what we've seen in every Batman movie is and if any Warner Brothers executives are listening this is my pitch listen carefully hoes or just fucking steal the idea I honestly wouldn't even care just so I could sit down and watch this fucking movie. Listen up, bitches. Do it. Do most of it from the criminal's perspective. Because pretty much everything we've seen thus far in a Batman movie is him, like, doing his little gadgets and shit to knock the lights out. And the criminals are like, oh, oh what, what the fuck happened? Doing it from the criminal's perspective, where they don't know, like, what's doing it. That he has a little gadget that's doing it. That's scary as fuck. All of a sudden, the lights go out, you're with your crew, you're just walking around, dude, you're just getting pulled into the shadows. That is fucking dope. Make that movie. Make that movie. I demand it. Who knows, maybe the Pattinson movie will be like that. I'm sort of doubtful, though. That's what I think the Ben Affleck movie would have been like. God damn it, I think it would have been so awesome. I probably think he was going for a pretty rated R centered thing and I don't think Warner Brothers was with it but if he tried to do that after Joker came out Warner Brothers would be like oh please please Ben the Academy Award winning actor writer did did he win an Oscar for writing I'm not sure but Joaquin won for Joker so good for him not for not an Oscar um, it was a Golden Globe I think the Oscars haven't happened yet but Joker has 11 nominations that's crazy. I actually... My brother watched that. Text Parker and say, What did you end up thinking of Joker? Forgot the question mark. Most of the time when I say question mark to Siri, she just puts question at the end of my sentence. So I'll be like, Hey mom, what do you got going on later today? Question. Fucking Jesus Christ. It's not perfect, but it's crazy to think what it will be like in the years to come. Especially considering the fact I'm going to have to start paying a fucking grand for a phone. Like, that's that's where the market's going. Suck my dick. That is absolute garbage. This phone has been doing me pretty good, but I just know the same, same fucking Apple thing is going to happen where... It shits out. The battery shits out. And uh, you know what? I did it. I gave in. I bought an adapter recently that allows me to charge my phone and listen to music at the same time. <coughs> Excuse me. I finally fucking gave in to that shit. I refused to do it because I was like, fuck these guys. Create a problem. Sell a solution. They said they took the headphone jack away because it was going to make it more waterproof. But Samsung's fucking phone was more waterproof and it had a headphone jack so f fuck you god damn it that is you know how many times that has inconvenienced me or just having to have a fucking dongle in unless i want to use i i just stick with the straight up apple headphones that plug into the uh to the charging port those sons of bitches dude they were doing that with the max too they were just taking little things out here and there. Little ports, seeing if anyone would notice. And now, now if you want all this back, you've got to buy like a fucking $80 giant... Uh, excuse me. Giant fucking thing that you plug in. So, Jesus Christ, dude. God damn it, I'm spilling. Well, out of sight, out of mind. Man, I'm s sort of starting to get hungry now because I felt like shit. I didn't want to eat dinner, but I um, guess that's what happens when you get stoned. Probably going to have more of my mom's fried rice blow through that shit, and then tomorrow I can start the gumbo. Ooh, she sent me home uh, 
from uh, winter break with a bunch of fried rice, which is one of my favorites, and then gumbo, which is another one of my favorites. And I wanted to extend the period that I had real food for as long as possible, so I just put the gumbo in the freezer, and I've been getting through the fried rice. And it's been so good. So fucking good. It also allows me to save my quinoa, because quinoa is pretty much one of one of the only foods I have left in storage right now, and I'm not going to eat fucking quinoa for one meal and then fried rice for another. So, you know what I have been going way too hard on lately? Flamin' Hot Cheetos. Love them so much. I just have a problem with chips, bro. Last year it was chips and ice cream, but this year I haven't really been getting ice cream. And I love ice cream more, don't get me wrong. Ice cream is my fucking shit. Tillamook mudslide. Don't even fuck with me, bro. Tillamook mud. Oh my god. Thinking about that right now? That would be so good. Just take another fucking pull and have some Tillamook mudslide. It is magical. Like my whole, the whole way through. Oh my god. I really like mint chocolate chip ice cream, though. And I sort of thought that was a universally loved flavor. But my buddy the other day was like, he just doesn't like mint shit. And, it, and he was like, yeah, mint chocolate chip ice cream. And I just sort of assumed in my head, when he was telling me he didn't like mint things, that mint chocolate chip ice cream is an exception. Because of how much I love it. But oh my God. Bro, you know what the fuck I discovered? I can't remember the... Oh, God, who is it? Is it Tillamook, maybe? There is a dairy manufacturer other than Dairy Gold that produces strawberry milk. And I fucking love strawberry milk. I know everyone thinks that shit's gross, but it's probably just nostalgic for me because I'd get it every time I went to Krispy Kreme growing up. But that was pretty much the only place I could get it, and it was always Dairy Gold. But I went to my local Hagen here in the Beehem, and I found a... They had some small ones and a fucking giant thing. And it was so good. If, if you could get half gallons of that, like you could um, chocolate milk, I would... Oh my god, I'd go hard. I'd have it with almost every meal. I drink so much milk anyways. So much milk. I actually just bought cereal for the first time in a while. Like a long time. And that's another thing traditionally I go hard on. Like when I was living at home, I would wake up almost every day and have a mixing bowl of cereal. Particularly Captain Crunch, which is what I bought tonight. The oops, all berries. <laughs> Oopsie. Man, when I was younger, my buddies and I used to laugh so hard at these fucking stupid videos called Sex Noises in a Library. And uh, I just sort of rediscovered them recently, and they're still so fucking funny at moments. Such a stupid thing. I find my favorite sense of humor is the really fucking stupid shit. Like, overtly stupid comedy. Like, almost like South Park, but I don't like saying that because South Park is actually some intelligent comedy a lot of the time. And they have some stupid shit. You know, like fucking fart jokes and that stuff. Man, they ripped on Family Guy for an episode. Or maybe a couple episodes, I can't quite remember. Hold on. I'm walking back over to get this fucking soda. I really don't usually like drinking soda either. Mmm. Mmm, like a Skeksy, but, uh, my throat was killing me. What are Skeksis from? Is that the Dark Crystal? watched it. Everyone fucking hates me for it. The Dark Crystal. One time I got into an argument with my buddy over whether or not Grease was a big movie. Love that movie. And he he was like, it's not it's not a big movie. Like, let's test it. We'll put it in the group chat. And he said something like, does anybody know the movie Grease? And then the first comment, uh, my buddy, <laughs> my other buddy was like, oh, Colvin. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Well, you know what? What Colvin don't know, don't hurt Colvin. And he's not listening to this. What are we, like 35 minutes in? Most of the way in? Yeah, he's not listening to this shit. Nobody tell him. We'll keep it a big, giant secret. Oh, Colvin. I'm actually sort of scared of crossing a line somehow. 
just like trying to do some innocent joke on this and getting either sued or someone blowing up on me. I'm more concerned about getting sued for just uh, expressing my opinions pretty much on trademark things because I am so... I express my opinions so overtly that it uh, it can really sound like slander sometimes. And I'm like, don't try this fucking product. It fucked me. That's just classic me exaggerating shit. Because that's just how my fucking brain works. I am so excitable, dude. Like a little fucking child. God damn it. I have a fucking ingrown hair on my eyebrow and it is killing me. It's like you can only pluck so many hairs before you start looking like you shave your fucking eyebrow. Oh, my mom asked me if I was shaving my eyebrow. I was like, what are you talking about? Why the fuck would I be shaving my eyebrow? She was just like, oh, I don't know. Well, I either that or you burnt it smoking. <laughs> Dude, there was one time when I was like, I don't know, 16. I was smoking with some buddies behind Safeway, but we didn't have anything. So someone stole a tiny pumpkin. I'm talking, I don't know. It's not very big at all. And someone else using Stoner Ingenuity and The Force, I believe, wound up a bunch of papers and, like, got a hole in it somehow with no fucking knife or anything and uh, made a giant long neck. But we didn't have a lighter either. So we had to use a torch. And the next day, I was just sitting next to my mom talking to her. Uh, excuse me, Jesus Christ. Sitting my mom talking to her. Sitting next to my mom. And uh, she looked at me real carefully. And then she sort of like closes in and grabs my face. She goes, Stop fucking burning your eyelashes when you smoke, rookie. I was like, oh. Oh, Jesus. Oh, man, that sounded like the Bill Burr thing. His podcast is fucking hilarious. I love the Bill Burr podcast. Biggest inspiration for, for this one. Um, I also love the Joe Rogan podcast. He just had an episode with Robert Downey Jr. I haven't listened to the whole thing yet. It was like an hour and 12 minutes probably. So it should be easy to get through. Especially uh, comparatively to most of Joe Rogan's episodes. Like three hours. But I'm not hating, because I, I think that's super cool. Like, having three hours to dive into a topic or dive into someone's mindset. Like, that's what we should have for politics. But no one has that attention span, dude. Robots have been having a, uh, a lot of politicians on there, I think, recently. But I haven't been watching those ones. I watched some of the Bernie one. Yeah, I got sort of bored. I really mostly listen to politics podcast when I'm fucking pizza driving because it's so easy. Listen to books. Man, I should have some books coming up on my app. I've got this app where I listen to books but you have to reserve them just like an actual library and so a lot of the books I'll be like oh I want to read this, this, and this. So I'll put them on hold and then you only have so long to read them and they just come up all at the same time. It's like fuck now i got to blow through these. But when I'm pizza driving for a weekend, you know on, on the road six plus hours a day especially the, the fucking drive there or back that's two hours blow through that shit you, all the books I've listened to have been like six hours probably or close to I just listened to David Spade's audiobook I think I was talking about that on the last one it's awesome what's the next book I'm listening to I know that I wanted to listen to the Beastie Boys book my dad said uh my dad said that one was maybe a little bit boring. He listens to a lot of books. He looked at something. Uh, I think it was on this app. That was how many books he read this year. Oh, oh! I have some books up. Oh my god. Sorry, I shouldn't be looking at this while I'm doing this. Oh my god! Fuck yeah! Oh, I waited too long to check the app, and one from fucking. Oh, that sucks. One of them automatically returned it, so... Well, I guess I'll just have to get through these two other ones. I really just want to try to read so many books. Help me become a better writer. I think just being a creative writer is one of those things you, you maybe have or you don't. It can only be taught to a certain extent. Some people just have a swiftness. 
Like, just a, a stroke of the words. It, it's crazy, some of the shit I've read. Like, how the fuck did someone come up with that? How long did it take someone to come up with that? It's what I think when I listen to a lot, a lot of Lil Wayne lyrics. I'm like, bro, you wrote all of these? Really? I'm not calling anyone out. I just think that's a little bit suspicious, dude. I don't know, maybe that dude is like a fucking poet. Is it just not sort of weird that gangsters chose to get engaged in music? I, I sort of... Th my buddy pointed that out to me one time. I think it was actually Coleman. It's like, that's sort of weird that gangsters got involved in music, especially, especially rap, because it's so poetic and technical and shit that is fucking bananas to me but thank god they fucking did because look at what we have now now we have circles all comes around well i'm gonna call it quits to tonight's episode of the weasley update should i just start doing an intro that's like a classic radio intro the weasley update welcome to weasley that's that's gonna be my outro from here on out peace out bitches